Welcome back to the channel guys. It has been a hot minute since I put a video up. Uh, it's probably been two months. Um, life has gotten in the way in other areas and I really haven't been out in the garage plugging away, but uh, we had an incident last week, a pretty large hail incident. And so all of the vehicles outside got just hammered. Yeah, don't eat them. Let me show you what we've got. And uh, in this video, we're gonna work on the kids learning car, the 2005 Scion. I don't think it's been on the channel yet, but it definitely needs some attention. Uh, had liability only coverage, so uh, it's not gonna get fixed under insurance. So, I'm going to see if I can get it fixed. All right, we will start with the Caprice wagon. And um, there are, it may be hard to pick up. You can kind of pick one up there, but there are hail dents all over the roof. And hail dents all over the hood. Not sure how much the camera will pick it up. Hopefully it's picking up some of them. Um, I've got um, a couple dings on this side. Uh, the camera's probably not gonna pick them up because they're small. This uh, front quarter panel got hit. You can probably pick up some of that. And then this quarter panel Got a really big one right there. It hit it so hard that it knocked off some of the paint. And uh, the hill really didn't hit this side because it was downhill. And all of my glass on this vehicle is intact. It is the only vehicle that didn't have a glass issue. Uh, my son's Ford Ranger would normally park here. He's at school right now, or track practice. And he got some glass damage, our forward transit. Um, got some hail damage on the hood here. The glass got hit in two different places. And um, there's some dents along the side and the roof um, is pretty hammered as well. Um, so the Caprice and the, the van will become insurance issues, so I'm not really going to touch those. But then this is the vehicle that all of my kids so far, I'm about ready to start the fifth child on learning. They've all learned on this. I've, we've had this vehicle for, I think, about 10 years. It's a 2005 Scion TC, and it's been through a lot. I think every one of the kids has been in some sort of minor fender bender, and... Uh, just a small scuff, parking lot scuff or something like that, but such is the ways of learning how to drive. So this vehicle already had dings and it's probably worth all of $2,000 at this point. So I don't keep any real insurance on it except to protect the other driver if they were to get in any accident that injured another driver. Uh, but this one got hit here on the windshield. Uh, that one's pretty minor. But then this was completely blown out. All right. There's a look at that glass. It just got completely blown out. And this glass is not functional i don't really i mean you can actually see through about a third of it from the inside maybe half um so there is some sunlight that can come through there but it doesn't move at all this is the sunroof up here this didn't get hurt um, this is really just a stationary piece of glass between the rear hatch uh, and the sunroof 
So I called a bunch of glass places in town and none of them sell this piece. Uh, they all um, said they didn't carry it and uh, asking around a little bit, one of them told me it's a dealership only piece. So I called the local Toyota dealership and this piece of glass, there's some sort of frame that attaches to it, is about $2,000. And then they wanted another three in labor to put it in because they said it was a pretty large job to, to replace this. So five grand total would be the estimate to get that fixed. <laughs> the car's only worth two to begin with. So I am going to attempt a repair myself. We're gonna see if we can get this done. First step, I am going to remove all of this blown out glass, clean it up a little bit, and I wanna see if I can just take a piece of sheet metal, paint it black so it matches, and uh, fix it in here. Obviously, we don't want a roof leak, um, but it doesn't move, it's a stationary piece, um, and the sunroof glass actually comes up and over the top of it. So, we're gonna see if we can repair this on the cheap so the kids learn your car can continue to do its thing. Okay, let me give you an update as I take off this glass. There is a strip of probably adhesive, probably what they use so I'm um, assuming it's what they use to adhere glass to bodies. I'm sure this probably has a similar adhesive underneath it, but it uh, goes all the way around. Um, I've got probably three quarters of it off. I've got a little bit to chip off back there. I gotta use a, that spatula to kind of chip it off of the adhesive. That's the way I'm taking it off. And um, there are five, I think there's five of these guide posts uh, around so I'm assuming those are attached to the glass when they put this together and they here's the top of one they slide into some locating holes around the top so I don't think I need these because um, I don't have a perfectly shaped piece of glass that I need to center as I slide it in so I'm pretty sure those are just guides to help them center it as they assemble it so I'm gonna keep chipping off the rest of the glass that's on that end um, to reveal just this strip and then I um, need to find some bonding agent to put some sheet metal to this and I think that should be about what I need to do after I get a piece of sheet metal and cut it to the right size. kind of work on this a little bit out of the wind and weather. And I got all this cleaned up around here, got all the urethane adhesive that used to be here out, uh, ran some brake clean around it. Um, I didn't um, worry about removing all of the paint, uh, just wanted to make sure I removed all the adhesive. So in, in some places there's still paint there. Um, pretty sure, I need to do some more research, but I'm pretty sure uh, the adhesive I bought is going in here just fine to paint. Uh, so here's what I picked up. 
this SEM dual mix. I went to a local shop that supplies professional grade uh, auto body stuff. Picked this up. I rented the gun that is used for this kind of system for a hundred bucks. And then I'll get my hundred bucks back when I return the gun. So, uh, works on steel, aluminum, uh, SMC fiberglass. Uh, again, I need to do some research to make sure this will do paint. If it doesn't, then I'll go ahead and remove the last of the paint here. Um, I would like it to adhere to paint because this is steel. And then what I am going to put on the top is some 080 thick uh, aluminum sheet. Um, picked up a piece of this at my local metal supply. So I'm going to cut this to shape and I'd like to paint the underneath side both so that you don't see the raw aluminum if you if you open this slider from inside the car so it's black but then also to keep the aluminum spaced away from this steel so I don't get um, rust forming between the two different types of metal. So that would be my desire is that I can uh, paint this and then paint that um, with some um, paint that's going to adhere really well. Probably the Rust-Oleum farm equipment paint that uh, the, the uh, I'm forgetting the name, a blank on the name. Anyway, I've had a really good experience. It is uh, what is all black here on the cart vet and it is really tough and it adheres really well. It doesn't flake off. So uh, that'll be the next. So the next step is to go ahead and cut this to size, start signing it, sand, or start sizing it to the hole here. And then there's a little bit of curve, I think both this way and across this way. There's definitely a curve across this way. Uh, so I'll have to hit it with uh, a rubber mallet just a little bit to get that curve into it. So we'll start on that. Okay, got that cut up. Um, did pretty good on the size. It's, um, I'll have to kind of sit it in there. I might need to take a little bit of material out here, but let's check the other side. Yep, it's touching, so I need to take just a little bit of material out of the edge here. But uh, you can kind of see now the little bit of bend I got to add to the metal to get it to fit. It's not a lot of bend, but a little bit. And then there's a little bit of bend this direction, kind of down in that corner and down in this corner just ahead. So we'll work on removing just a little bit of material here and then hammering it in or hammered into shape. Well, I did a little more research and that adhesive is definitely only supposed to go metal to metal. Um, they really don't recommend applying it to painting painted surfaces. So I need to get the rest of this paint off of this surface. The adhesive does have what they call microspheres in it. And those are designed to keep space between dissimilar metal metals so that you don't get galvanic corrosion. So because this is steel and I'm putting aluminum to it, those little, they're little tiny microspheres that will keep space between this metal and the aluminum so that there isn't corrosion that develops between the dissimilar metals. So I'll get this sanded off and prep the other one. We won't be able to paint the underneath side. Uh, once it's up here, we could probably come back and like use a brush or something and paint the underneath side. But um, for now, uh, actually, as I'm talking about this, I may take some measurements and paint a square in the middle, just black, just to black out the aluminum from the underneath side, but make sure I leave raw aluminum where it's gonna rest on here. So I think that's what I'll do. I'll paint off a square in there. All right, got that painted up, it'll, Stay clear of where the adhesive is going to go. Painted it with this Rust-Oleum protective enamel. This stuff is uh, super durable. 
That's going to be the underneath side, so it'll just be black inside. Uh, i got to wait for that to set up, and then we'll flip it over and paint the other side some primer first, and then probably going to do flat black. Need to this, go to the store and pick up some flat black. And this has got to set for a few hours anyway, so it'll probably be tomorrow after church when I get to painting the rest of this. And then we can work on putting it on the roof. We've got this primered up and then I hit it after some sanding with this just Rust-Oleum flat enamel. Um, I don't really want a gloss look just because I'm hoping it'll hide some of the imperfections. And that's been drying for a day and a half now or so. So we're gonna hit it with some 2K clear matte. Again, I don't want the gloss look. We'll let this dry for a day or so, make sure it's decently hard, and then, um, then we'll work on putting it on the roof. Um, I want it reasonably hard because I'm gonna put some weight on top of this to kind of hold it down and mash it while the uh, panel bond uh, dries up and adheres. So let's get to clearing this up. All right, the clear coat is all hardened up on that. And I've got it turned over right now so I could clean up around the edge with some denatured alcohol. And this got all sanded down to bare metal and I've cleaned it with some denatured alcohol so we're clean. And then on here on the floor, I've got this gun, my local kind of professional paint shop where I bought the panel bond, also rented this gun to me. Uh, they charged me for a hundred bucks and then I'll get my hundred bucks back when I bring it back. So, uh, cause it's a special gun and for this one job, I didn't really want to buy the, I think it's actually a $130 gun if you buy it. So, um, we'll get this loaded in here and uh, put on that tip and then we should be able to apply it to the roof. Uh, instructions say we've got 90 minutes of work time so don't have to go super fast. Um, we'll apply a good good bead around it, um, probably smush it out a little bit um, just to make sure from the instructions I've read you want to, let me go back up here, you want to make sure that you completely cover all of the exposed metal so that you don't get, um, you want adhesive on the metal because it'll keep it from rusting if you don't completely cover the exposed metal. You could get water underneath there and cause some rusting. So we'll run a bead around here and then kind of make sure we smear it out a little bit so that it's completely covering the exposed metal. That's aluminum, so I'm not too worried about exposed metal on that side. And again, like I said earlier, it's got microspheres in it, so it'll keep the aluminum away from the steel on here and causing uh, a galvanized corrosion between the two dissimilar metals. So let's get to that, and then I'll catch you up probably once the panel is on. All right, panel is on there. I uh, just got a few random things from the garage, some scrap metal, um, and uh, holding it down with some weight and then some little pieces of cardboard just to kind of space it all out. So we will let this sit overnight and then uh, pull it all off tomorrow and maybe take a hose to it and just kind of make sure things are properly watertight. Um, pretty sure it'll be fine, but We'll just double check it before we send it off down the road. All right, got it pulled out of the garage. Um, it'd been sitting for almost 24 hours. Um, sprayed it down with some water. I've got zero leaks on side, inside, which is excellent news. Um, so it should be good to get this back on the road. I think the flat black works well. Um, and uh, there's a couple of little wrinkles in the aluminum, but it's not too bad. And uh, for the learner vehicle, for my son, um, who's going to be learning on here shortly, it's going to work great. Well, 
that's going to do it for this one. It's good to have that car back on the road. This video is going to come out uh, right before Easter and uh, I will be celebrating the resurrection of my Lord and Savior this weekend. If you're watching this uh, before Easter, right around, I hope, uh, I hope you do as well. Um, Jesus Christ is the only uh, God among all of the religions that was raised from the dead. And he did so uh, so that we could go and be with him in heaven one day when we die. He died um, as a sacrifice for us so that our sins could be washed away and we could be made clean and righteous before the Lord so that we could go to heaven. So I hope that uh, if you're interested there, you can dig in more. Uh, feel free to comment or search out the truth. Go visit a local church or talk to a friend that you know is a, a believer in Jesus Christ. And uh, God bless you. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.